Winter in Berlin looks like an autumn which is lost on Alexanderplatz Bahn metro station and can't find a way out, so the real winter can't take its place. And sometimes, personally, I miss snow very much, so today I'm going to draw a deer somewhere in a snowy forest. Hi guys, welcome to my channel! A friend of mine made me a perfect New Year's gift and now I finally have small Skoda brushes. So today let's check are they good and where my expectations worth it. Let's see what I found under the Christmas tree. What do we have here? A lovely pink pocket. I think my brushes are there. And a masking fluid. Yay! I wanted to try it a couple of months already. That's an interesting medium. You can cover some areas on paper with it. Once it's dry, you can apply watercolors above it. But the paper is protected, so when the masking fluid is removed with eraser or just with your finger, the paper under covered area remains white. This medium is very useful when you need to keep very small areas of paper white and it's extremely hard to paint around them. But let's leave it for the future works. What's more interesting for me now is what this pink pocket has inside. Oh yes, I knew it. Brushes. But look, there are not only brushes for watercolors, but also silicone ones. Probably silicone brushes are more suitable for a clay sculpturing, but I need them for a masking fluid especially the sharpest one, because if you'll try to use a watercolor brush with a masking fluid, you'll destroy your brush after the first usage. I don't want to hurt my brushes, so I will use the silicone ones. And now the guest of the day, the Skoda brushes. I got brushes in sizes 1, 2, 4 and dagger brush 1 of 4 inches. Very interesting shape. I think it should be very convenient to draw thin lines which should go wide with one stroke with this brush. For example, when drawing leaves. This brush will also leave for future more botanical as post paintings. And in today's work I'm going to use the rest three. I prepared an outline of the deer which is looking for a moth, I suppose, in advance. For this work we'll need only five colors. Indigo, pyrrolin green, yellow ochre, burnt amber and van dyke brown. Despite the fact that on the reference photo some parts of deer's fur look black, we won't use black from the tube. I even don't have one from Daniel Smith's and today I'm going to use colors of this brand. I need to mention that every supply used in this video is a subject of personal choice and not a paid advertisement. Black color in watercolors painting is a complicated story. Professional artists do not recommend to use it straight from the tube, but to mix it by yourself. I'm still learning to use not expected from the first sight for watercolor beginners colors and color combinations. For example, our dear legs will be mostly of indigo color, but at the end it won't look weird. And from my experience, pretty nice black could be mixed from indigo or any other dark blue and some dark brown color. For the base layer of deer's fur I'm using Van Dyke brown color and the Skoda Perla brush of the size 4. I'm making very light plant with the clear water, because some parts of the fur looks almost white and covering almost the whole deer's body, avoiding the most light parts. As I said before, I'm covering the legs with the indigo color, and surprisingly, in the places where Van Dyke brown meets indigo, there is no body colors. That is my learning. You can bravely use a combination or a mix of indigo and Van Dyke brown colors, they look good together. I'm adding more saturated brown to the most dark pieces of fur, already trying to imitate the fur direction. Also I added some burnt amber to the parts of the dark deer's fur, which faced the light to add some visual interest. Now I'm trying to gently go darker in the most shadowed areas, but do it very carefully to not go too dark too early. And drawing fur for me is the most complicated challenge at this moment. But I came up with the hug, which is on one side is almost physically painful for me because of what I'm doing with my brush, but on the other hand helps to imitate pretty much realistic fur. But it's on the accent layer. Now I'm working on the deer's head. On the reference photo I see a solar backlight falls on the deer's body, making like a hollow on the edges, so I'm leaving these areas very light. You can see it on the head, on the neck and on the back of the deer. At this moment I don't really sure which background I want to add later, there is a good chance that on my picture won't be bright sunshine. I will decide it later, but just in case I'm leaving edges very light. Let's finish the base layer on the fourth leg and now let's focus on the fur texture. Oh, it's the most complicated thing for me, fur and hair. Someday I will learn how to draw it without suffering. 
This is the finishing of the first texture I am drawing using the same Van Dyke brown color, but now with a Skoda Perla of the size 2 brush. To imitate fur, I am doing a lot small light thin strokes in the direction which I see in the reference photo. All strokes should be aligned and follow natural shapes of the deer's body. Where I see the transition to light, I am adding more burnt sienna, this will make our deer look more natural and alive and not as someone put sepia filter on it. Doing a lot small strokes could be tedious, so I came up with the life hack which I am going to share with you. You need a natural brush or a synthetic one which imitates a natural. I am using Skoda Versatile in size 6 from a Skoda Red Travel brush set. And now the heartbreaking part. Take the damp brush and dip it into the paint several times so that it becomes disheveled and looks like a broom and continue the same light strokes but now with the bigger brush. This way one movement leaves several strokes, they are very thin and look more natural compared to when we drew single stroke with the single movement. This way I am moving everywhere where I want to add more texture. Now let's darken the legs. I am using indigo for this. I am not afraid to add more saturated blend with the clear water this time, because it's an accent layer and I am not planning to go much darker further. Also to keep deer's fur palette more consistent, I decided to add a bit indigo on the deer's back. I see on the reference photo that not only legs look bluish, but the back too. Hmm, that looked a bit strange, so I lifted color a bit to make it look more natural. From my perspective, deer's leg looked too blue, so I decided to add a bit one day brown on the shadowed areas. I think now it looks much better. While the body is drying, I'm switching to the horns. This deer has gorgeous horns, and I'm covering them with a light blend of yellow ochre with a clear water. At this moment they look flat, but it's ok, we're going to fix it. I'm using burnt amber to emphasize shadowed areas and on the very edges of the horns I'm adding Van Dyke brown. I'm making a horn which is closer to the viewer, a bit more saturated and more on a warm side of spectre, while keeping another horn a bit more cooler and less saturated. Let's finish deer's eye. On the reference photo the eye is hardly visible because it's dark brown and in the shadow. So I'm also making it visible but not to stand out, because to emphasize it I will look not natural. Also I see that ears should be darker, so I'm working on them too. Now it's time to add the background. I'm still not 100% sure about which background I want to add. What I know for sure it won't be like on the reference photo. So I decided to start at least from painting the sky. I made a light mix of indigo with the clear water and covering all upper part of the painting, drawing around the deer and the ground where it stands. I decided the deer is standing on the snow, so I am drawing its shadow on the ground. I suspect that it's not only this deer who walks there, so the snow is definitely not flat. That's why I made in the shadowed areas on the snow with the indigo color. At this moment I understood that I want to add falling snow on this last step, so it's a cloudy day and there is no bright shining sun visible. I keep it in mind for now and made a notice for myself to darken highlights which I left on the deer's fur. But for now I'm drawing the forest using perilene green color with the same technique which I've described in the video about Daniel Smith watercolors. I will leave the link to this video in the description. The technique is super simple, I'm providing the bottom part of the future tree with the almost clear water, then I draw a straight line, the trunk of the future tree and then add in branches with the light strokes. Since the bottom part of the tree is painted wet on wet, it looks like the tree disappears in the fog or in our case in snow. Trees which are far away I'm drawing with the very light color while those which are closer to the viewer are much more dark and saturated. I made three plants of trees, light, mid and dark, on the both sides of the deer. I built the composition the way so the trees are kinda guide the viewer's side to the deer's head because it's the main part of the painting. Now I'm ending the light plant pyrrolean green, indigo and the clear water in the shadowed areas on the snow to make the painting cohesive. Since there is no bright sun in the painting, I'm darkening the edges of the deer. See, I didn't forget about it. And now the only last step is left, the snow. I want to make it more interesting compared to the picture with the forest and mountains, to add plants, front plant and back plant. On the front plant snowflakes will be bigger and on the back plant smaller. To achieve this, at first I'm taking my Escoda Versatile size 6 brush and some white gouache. Lightly taping with my fingers on the brush, I'm making drops of water mixed with white color fall on the painting. Nice, I'm pretty happy with what I see. 
I'm pretty sure that our deer was standing there under the snow quite some time, so there should be snow on his back. So I'm using a Skoda Perla brush in the size 2 and the white gouache to add the snow to the deer's back. And now the last step, tiny snowflakes applied with the toothbrush. It's important to keep an eye on big drops of watery paint which could fall from the toothbrush and if it happens, to quickly remove them with the clear damp big brush. Let's sign out painting with this Coda Perla size 0 brush and that's it, our painting is done. What I can say, a Coda Perla brushes are like always very good. It's very comfortable to work with them, they keep their shape, you don't need to reshape them every time you touch for the colors, they keep just enough water and they have very fine tip. I can definitely recommend them since I enjoy painting with them by myself. I hope this video was helpful for you. If you have any questions, please let me know in the comment section down below and see you in the next videos. Bye!